Marcellus, I'll start with you. I believe DJ Durkin should resign here. Mer the Board of Regents, the Maryland power structure has let him down in the game of football down. The guy should walk away. I don't think he should. Um, uh, sensitive topic here because a, lo a loss of life obviously occurred on DJ Durkin's watch. Um, but after a 178-page investigation, um, after numerous months of intense investigation, uh, based on intel from that investigation and his location at that moment uh, when all of these incidents occurred, uh, I, I respect their decision to put him back on the sidelines. Um, I think it would be honorable of DJ Durkin right now, uh, instead of running from this situation or stepping down, to actually restore a culture. Uh, and what is that culture? What is the culture of football that is really coming into question right now? Because I don't know if all the observers and outsiders want to know the deep, dark underbelly of motivation that comes from playing the game of football. Um, there's a couple mantras that coaches used to always profess and we live by. One is uh, everything that we ask of you is not more than you can handle, just more than you expected. And that lends itself to what conditioning is. Mental conditioning, getting you tougher. Physical conditioning, get you stronger. Uh, people have to understand that in order to get stronger, you have to break yourself down. And then when you break yourself down in the process of restoring yourself, you actually get stronger, bigger, better, faster, whatever that may be. And it's a gray area and a balancing act right now that's occurring. And unfortunately, we lost a life in that process. And collegiate football has lost 30 lives since 2000 in the process of conditioning. Um, that's a different conversation than this. But I don't think that DJ Durkin should run from that because I don't find him fully culpable. You know, it's hard for me to say that I can endorse DJ Durk and return to the sideline, not only because of the incident with the kid passing away, but more so just the culture that was created around that program. When you hear the way the strength coach and coaches would talk to the players, to me, I find that unacceptable. Now, maybe I kind of have that pie in the sky uh, view on it because I played under Mac Brown when he was at North Carolina. We had strength coaches, Jeff Mad Dog Madden. We had Rick Tootin, who also were hard on us, but they also treated us with respect. Coach Brown always had a policy where coaches couldn't curse at the players. He talked about he wanted to make sure that we were treated with class, so in turn, we would treat others with class. So for me, I don't get that, oh, I got to beat them down to build them up. No, I believe you build them up, and they'll continue to build others up. And so for me, my relationship with my coaches and Mac Brown, he was a role model. He would be a pseudo father figure to me. If I ever had a big decision, I could call him. That's what I expect my coaches to be like. So when I hear the degrading and some of the treatment of the players in Maryland, I can't endorse a coach like that for my son or for kids that I know. I can't say Maryland's the right place for you. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> all of those things, everything that's been said is true. Here, here's the, the hard part for me is that this, is, this decision by the board is going to be viewed as like, well, all they care about is winning. But if that's all they cared about, I think they actually would have done something different. And the reason is, is because I feel like that team is lost. There are fractures in that locker room that are not about guys playing and not playing. It's about a life lost that they care deeply about. There were guys in, in DJ's first meeting back and in the meeting that they announced that he would be back, players stood up and said, we're out. And wait, they walked out, they posted on social media, they don't want to play for this man, so on and so forth. Now, there's another sector of players that have been defending DJ Durkin. That fracture is too big to overcome. This is not a starting quarterback decision here. This, this is a, a, a personal deal. So that's a, one of the reasons why I thought that this was such an interesting decision from the board. And then there's the other aspect of just how college football works, which is this. The lifeblood of every college football program is the ability to recruit. Mm -hmm. How in the world is this guy going to recruit in a competitive sense when all the opposition has to do is point at this incident and say, you don't want to go play for that? Whether it's true or not, that's just how college football works. So that's why I was actually very surprised that the board did this, and this was not in the vein of, we just want to win. Because I think this actually makes it harder for them to compete. Matt Canada, the interim head coach, had actually done a remarkable job, and Maryland was playing very good football this year, in part because they were galvanized by everything that happened. In particular, the memory of their fallen teammate and his courage and what he stood for, Jordan McNair. And now this this throws a grenade into all of that. And, and quite frankly, I don't know how they survive this because even if he sticks around, 
again, that lifeblood is going to be taken away from you, so eventually this is going to end in a poor fashion for everybody there. Part of the reason why I think he should step aside. When you walk into that meeting room and you see that kind of division amongst your players, that's not an easy fix. And you're already eight games into your season. Uh, the Matt Canada has shown some level of competency. Uh, sometimes you have to be bigger uh, than the situation. And it can't just be about DJ Durkin and perhaps, in my view, his relationship with Kevin Plank and the support he has from the most powerful person on that campus. It has to be about the kids in that room. And if DJ Durkin can't see that he's hindering the kids in that room from having the ideal college football experience, take your money. They're going to give you five million bucks. Your reputation won't be so tarnished that you can't get a job someplace else, either as an assistant and perhaps as a head coach again. That's why I think the guy should do the honorable thing and remove himself. Because to me, the university and, and, and whoever's influencing the Board of Regents and the power structure have made a cowardly decision. Well, it's interesting if you're DJ Durkin, um, you've been proven to stand on the side of little to no culpability, but certainly uh, I think even the Board of Regents said, yes, he has some responsibility in this, but not the lion's share. Um, you don't stand alone when you stand with the truth. And I think that he's sitting there feeling like, okay, I have a room full of impressionable young men who I am trying to obviously rear and get prepared for the real world. Most guys in that locker room will not be professional football players, as in any collegiate locker room, most guys. So I'm standing here right now, and I don't want to displace the blame. I don't want to push the blame to what occurred. This was a situation that wasn't provoked because of the culture. Let's be real. This, How can you say that, Marcellus? I, I can tell you this. A toxic culture I exists in more places than just Maryland. If no question. You, okay. And what, we're, what, what has galvanized this conversation is obviously the loss of life because of a toxic culture, right? And through that process, the neglect that was paid because of the symptoms shown in a moment that the guy was fatigued, starting to show heat stroke, and then they didn't properly respond, correct? Yeah. But all those things are, are not all involved to the point of cause of death. And that's where, if you're going to try to blame this on the coach, then we have to keep a narrow focus to say, what did you do in that process that led to that? And the strength coach, he had to go. And because the strength coach was there in the immediate, the strength coach was there with his eyes, the strength coach was there with his instructions. What did DJ Durkin do in those? He moments? hired the well, strength and, coach. And let's let's not <laughs> let's not remember now. This this is not a situation where you've got 53 or 86 or 90 pros. You know these these kids are, are not getting paid. And and candidly, and Marcellus, this is where I'll push back. I'm tired of head coaches in college football claiming that they don't know or aren't responsible for things that happen under their program when they're the only ones that are reaping the benefits of those programs in a general sense. They're the ones with the guaranteed multi-year contracts. A lot of times the assistants don't even have that. A lot of times these guys are the highest paid employees of the state, not just the school, of the entire state that they work in. So it's, it's different. That, this is a, a different situation, and, and like I said, candidly, I'm tired of, of coaches saying it wasn't me, I wasn't in the immediate, when it's a, it's a college, this is an academic deal, right? This is an ap academic student-athlete type of deal. He's got to be responsible for the way the training staff reacts, the way that the strength coach behaves, and the culture with which those, those individuals are treated. And, and listen, like I said, I think from my side of this, I understand what the report was. I understand what the responsibility was that was laid at DJ's feet. I don't want to demonize him at all. And I'm not saying he should go or shouldn't go. I'm just saying that I know one thing about football, and that is football teams generally behave this way. They only care how much you know as a coach. They only care how much you know if they know how much you care about them. And this is a fractured locker room, and I think it's going to be really difficult for him to walk in there and have the same level of effectiveness growing them into men uh, and, and leaders in society in the future 
with this in the rearview mirror. I respect that ideal. I uh, just ask pragmatically, since we're being candid, which I live by, staying candid, how do you execute that? Because true power is delegation and respect and actually giving you the opportunity to lead. So if I hire a staff, I'm going to also be interdependent with that staff and allow them to coach their sectors. Uh, now well, we're going because to... you delegated, you're ultimately responsible. That's the point of delegation. Like you, you're still ultimately yes, responsible. Bad hires can get you fired, Marcellus. I, I, I understand that. Part but of the also... expertise they're paying for is his ability to hire the right people and put them in the right environment. That again, when a kid is in that kind of distress and you're throwing the p word and you're you're calling him cowardly. And that coach was... So that coach and the, whoever was supervising that coach that let that coach or that program, the training staff or wherever, think that was remotely appropriate, somebody's got to go, man. The head coach sets the vision. The head coach sets the vision for the program. He says, this is how I want my team to be. This is how I want us to play. This is how I want us to act. He hires coaches that can carry out that vision. The strength coach, to me, is the most important coach in a college football program. He's with the players far more than their position coaches than anybody else. And so... DJ Durkin had to have a conversation with the strength coach and say, look, I want you to grind on him, but here are the parameters. Right. Here's where it ends. And I'll say this, because Joel spoke to the fact that it's an academic environment. Coaches are teachers. The grass is their classroom, their blackboard. They're supposed to use the lessons that they teach those guys on the field to help them get better in life. All of the stuff that I read about, the language, making them eat um, almost gluttonous in front of their teammates, I don't understand how at any point that is helping them become better men. I just don't get that. So I understand. I think the biggest thing will be how does DJ Durkin come back? Because now he's hired. How does he come back? Is he humble when he comes back? Does he take accountability for what took place? Does he show the players, here's how we're going to change? That's what I want to see from him. Because now he's there, how can he make the program better? Marcel, I'm going to add this one last. I was just on a personal note. Yes. I hired a bad part-time secretary, and it cost me. Uh -huh. A bad part... Not someone integral to the staff. A part-time secretary, and it cost me. And I can't sit here and whine about it because I made the hire, and it was bad. It happens. This dude, the first hire he made was this strength coach. And, and just as Bucky said, if you college football now, the strength coach is the guy. He's, he's the runner of the underboss. He's the extension of the head coach. It's tough, man. I, I feel yeah. I got more empathy for McNair's family, the kids on that team, than I do for DJ Durkin. Absolutely.